Hello and welcome back to day 116 and I think my voice is getting better I haven't practiced talking as much and I can still talk and I'm also in a very chessy mood today which is good because I'm doing chess for six hours while I'm in school I want to get I keep saying I want to get certain things done and done and done but then I hit like variations of the same thing that I need to like predict and then code for later and there's so many different variations of chess that it's next to impossible to test everything so by the end of today I want check to be absolutely perfect at the bare minimum and then I'll throw in the tiny little nonsensical um, codes programs what um, all the little nonsensical algorithms that make no difference, it's all cosmetics. That's the, that's the sad thing. Like, at the beginning, there was, you could see massive changes, and now it's just all cosmetics. They only affect slight things, it's slightly irritating. So, um, I'm now visible to people I know, so I'll talk to you later. Alright, bloody five o'clock, look how dark it is. Stupid. I'm just walking back from programming club, and usually it's just me, James and Miss, and we're doing coursework. But we've got this um, test coming up. It's not really a test, it's kind of a challenge thing. Do you know the UKMT Maths Challenge? Well, it's kind of like the computing equivalent, which sounds like the best test ever invented. It sounds amazing, I can't wait to do it. But the problem is, um, we've entered our entire like computing... Anyone who wants to do it in computing is allowed to do it. So we've let some Year 10s in, we've let Year 11, Year 12, and my Year, year 13. And the problem is that while me and James, yeah, we can do it, we, we're fine. Um, the year 10s are only just starting to learn how to program. The year 11s should be fine, year 12s should be relatively okay. Um, they're only just starting to learn how to program. And the problem with them learning how to program is half of the things that are going to come up on the test they don't know yet. We've got two weeks to cram it into them. Me and James who are teaching them. We've got two weeks to cram it into them so that they will be able to sit down in the test and actually do it. Which is a bit of a pain. It's quite difficult the amount of stuff we actually have to do. Hello Sydney, it's a bit dark in here. I'm sorry, it was light when I left, wasn't it? Shit. Are you okay, Mr. Sydney? Hello. Strokey, strokey, strokey. Strokey. Strokey, strokey. That'll be back from work next week and uh, tomorrow. And you won't be on your own all day. Sorry, Sydney. Right then, anyway, um, the amount of things we need to be able to teach them, the kind of things that we take for granted, we think uh, stuff like loops and if statements and blah blah, it's all like, oh yeah, second fiddle, we've did that. We've only, technically we've only done it for, been doing it for a year, but we can do it, I personally can do it to such a level that I can program chess quite sufficiently. I only come across like certain problems and then I fix them myself. I haven't asked for any help at any stage of the game. And James is more or less the same, he asked for a little bit more help, he's not quite as a... He won't mind me saying, he knows that I'm slightly better than him at all stages. But, um... The problems we have with these are that they don't know half of the important things. They only have, like, two weeks for me as to teach it them, and then two weeks to practice. And then they're going to be entering into the same test that we are, and we're just going to fly through it, and they're going to be struggling. And I feel sorry for them. So we're putting on the computing club. The computer club's going into overdrive, trying to teach them what they need to know and what we so that they can practice and actually be able to do it in any way, shape or form. Um, and it's actually a mammoth task, the amount of stuff we have to teach them. And we're trying to devise a way of doing it. Because we have to teach them a certain amount of things. Um, we have to teach them like a, a lot of things. And then they haven't got time to practice it. Next week we have to teach them functions, arrays and functions arrays and then we need to practice on troubleshooting a problem and solving problems stuff that we would do instantaneously oh there's a problem okay look through there's a problem they're the kind of people because they're only in year 10 they haven't had long doing it they won't look through themselves or they can't look through themselves to find the problem themselves and that's a big problem so we're going to be trying to organize extra computing club sessions and stuff so that we can get them all trained and up to speed on it so that's exciting. Elsewise, in my little world of chess, I have a little problem. And everything works. Check works perfectly. As soon as I fix check, I'll do the queening and castling. And then I'll do stalemate checkmate, which I still haven't got done yet. Which I'm really angry at myself for not having finished yet. But um, the problem I have now is that 
You know how you're not. So, I'll, let me let me. I'll, I'll draw. I'll load it up and show you. All right then. So let me explain what's going on here then. Right. Basically, load the script. Okay. So here's my queen putting the king in check. It doesn't quite show well on the camera, but it does on the screen. Okay. Then so a message box comes up saying check, which is brilliant. Okay. All of these pieces here, they're limited to where they can move. The horses can only move here and here. Bishop can only move there. Queen can only move there. Okay, so let's move the queen for the sake of the argument. Queen moves there. Everything changes back. The thing turns nearly invisible. Okay, so if I move this queen up here... Oh, no, 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 no. Let me just move a random piece. Okay, so now, look, the queen can only move here or here. As if it moved away from the king to hit that way or that way, the king will be in check again by that. Which is how chess works. That means you can only move that queen... You can only move the queen this way. You can either take or blah blah blah. However, if I don't bother moving the queen, if I say, let's just leave the queen there for, for the time being. And then I move this piece here. Now, the queen, the same, the same things are the same, right? That piece can only move... Um, if this piece moves, it goes into check. However, if I click there, then it can move all of this way. Which means that when the king, when, okay, when the piece you're trying to move is sandwiched between the king and what is putting the king in check, it means it won't, it won't do the limited search for where it can move. And I know exactly why this is, and I'll show you exactly why this is. Right then, so here's what it does, basically, right. Here's the board, and this is basically what the board consists of. And this is actually what is behind the board. There is a grid, an imaginary grid of information that has coordinates in it. It'll have um, BK, Black King, Black Queen, White Queen. Okay then, so what happens is, when I click this queen here, it then deletes it from the board, saving what square it's in, and then it'll run check algorithm for the king to find out if moving that piece will end in it being in the, queen, in the king. So obviously it will circle around, it will go, oh look, there's a queen over there. So then it runs the check algorithm and it places C's in the board. Alright, so now all of the boards have C's in. We then remember where the queen was and put the queen back in. So there it is. There goes the queen. Sorted. There is now an imaginary C here. So when, oh, ah, ah, so when I click on this piece here, it looks for a C. It sees a C and then it knows... No, but I'm moving this piece here even. It looks for a C and it, then it knows that if it moves, it can only move where the C is or where this piece is. Which is all fine and dandy, that works perfectly fine all of the time until I move everything up and make it slightly bigger so you can actually see. Alright then, so let's say that this is now the board. We now have the Black King here, the Black Queen here, the White Queen here. Now I'm on the black side, so I want to take this white queen with my black queen. Well, I mean, why wouldn't I? It's a freaking queen. So I run the algorithm. Ignore that. Ignore that. That's, that's, that's not there. Okay. So I run the algorithm, and the algorithm wipes my piece from the board, which is brilliant. It then runs check. It will then highlight the fact that this piece is putting this in check along this path here of C's. But it then puts my piece back in. So it then puts a Q in. This is strange doing this while looking at the camera. Um... It then puts the queue back in. So then when this searches for a C to find out whether it needs to... Whether it needs to... Is that a good idea? Will that work? See, I'm, I'm now doing this so I can think about the problem properly. Um, this searches for a C so that it knows that it can only move where a C is or where the piece is at the end of the C, which is this piece here. Um, so would that... <coughs> my voice is going again. Um... But it doesn't find a C, so that means it can now... Oh, wrong queen all the time. Which means it can now move there, 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 there. Every, it can move every freaking where. Which means as soon as it's not here, let's say I move it over here because the game will allow me to do that. This will be now be in check, which isn't allowed in a game of chess. Because that will now mean that I can take the king and the game breaks. So I need a way to tell the computer that there has been a C there without changing too much code. Because I could, theoretically, if I started again from scratch, I could, I know of a way I could do it, but I'd have to start again from scratch. So I need a way to tell this that there was a C there, and which place it was in, which gri square, grid on the, which square on the grid it was in. 
which is difficult, and I've been thinking about it for the past 18 hours, well, for, for the whole of today, more or less, and I still haven't thought of an answer. So until I find of an answer, there's not much I can do. Well, excluding this, anyway. <laughs> Presses button fails at pressing buttons, so it doesn't turn on. Yay! Holy crap, that would work. That would work. If I if I were to do this again, right? Ah, adjust. Okay. If I were to do this again, and then when it finds the C, it puts the C in there. Oh, well, that's that's from the perspective of the king, not the perspective of the queen, because I reset the perspective to the king, and then I check it back to the queen later from the current piece location. Balls, 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 balls. However, if I know the current piece location, then I can find find the thing. If I can just call. Call the sea, except when you do that, it's going to re-render the board and it's not going to work. Balls, it won't work, never mind. A whole evening later. And granted, I've been doing other things. I've been organising and stuff and stuff and stuff. Um, physics has been... hasn't been touched. I've had it open, but I haven't actually done anything. And my dog is being weird. What are you doing? You're just making so much noise. Sid, it's nearly 12 o'clock at night. We don't have time. It's, no, you were not playing ball. Um, um, yes. <laughs> Physics and computing, I'm no uh, better. I need to figure out computing. Hopefully I'll have like a, a genius spark. Have you done a wee wee? Have you done a wee wee? Yes, okay, good boy. Um, Dad must see that. Um, I need the genius moment for computing. That's what I need. I need it needs to come to me before I can do it. Physics I'm going to do tomorrow. A couple of things I'm going to do tomorrow. It might be, might even make an interesting video. <laughs> Catch you later.